Hey everybody, and welcome to Windy's 2012, the show where I'll be covering the best and worst that the world of indie gaming had to offer this year. Over the next five days, I'll be talking about some of the coolest games to come out over the past 12 months. I'll have some of my friends on to discuss their favorite games of the year, and eventually, I will crown my favorite indie game of 2012. So without further ado, let's get started with some of this year's standout games. Best Music, FTL. Although both FTL and last year's winner Jamestown put you in control of powerful spaceships, the game's musical scores really couldn't be more different. Whereas Jamestown's sweeping orchestral scores made you feel like you were in the middle of huge, important battles, FTL's music is, by contrast, more stark, electronic, and minimal, uh, and it absolutely matches the feeling of drifting alone in a cold and unfriendly universe that the punishing gameplay of the game already evokes. Here, composer Ben Prunty has produced a soundtrack that changes dynamically during exploration and combat, and although it might be a stretch to suggest that FTL's music is the reason for its surprising success this year, FTL beat other standout titles like Fez to claim the title as my favorite soundtrack of 2012. Coolest Art, Botanicula Having previously produced the absolutely beautiful Machinarium, it should come as no surprise that Amanita Design's newest game, Botanicula, was perhaps the most visually pleasing game of last year. Trading in robots and futuristic junkyards for a colorful forest populated by all sorts of unusual flora and fauna worked out wonderfully, as the game emerged as the standout title from the humble bundle it was included in earlier this spring. In addition to its charming art, Botanicula also featured great music and interesting puzzles, making it one of the most enjoyable adventure games of the year, in addition to being one of the most beautiful. For those reasons, Botanicula trumps games like Tiny and Big and Fez for the indie game with the coolest art last year. Best game no one played, Half Minute Hero Super Mega Neo Climax Ultimate Boy. Coming up with the best game that no one played is always difficult because in all likelihood there were dozens of amazing games this year that I too missed out on. So instead I'm using this category as a way to spotlight a game that I feel didn't get the attention it deserved when it released. Half Minute Hero originally started on the PSP and then it bounced to Xbox Live Arcade before finally finding its way onto Steam this fall. It's a game that in many ways defies description. I mean, in typical RPG fashion, you're tasked with defeating an evil wizard who wants to destroy the world, and you do this by fighting monsters to gain experience and loot that make you stronger. The catch, however, is that the game is divided into levels, and on each level you have only 30 seconds to grind experience, buy new equipment, and defeat the boss. Thus the title. Although it's understandable that such an unusual game might be a tough sell for a lot of people, Half Minute Hero actually features gameplay that's surprisingly accessible, and the game's writing does a great job of poking fun at old-school JRPG tropes. Overall, Half Minute Hero is an appropriately bite-sized game that people should look out for if they enjoyed the tone of games like Cthulhu Saves the World. Honorable mention in this category goes to Endless Space, an interesting, hard sci-fi 4X game that is as addictive as it is deep. Weirdest Game, McPixel. In a year that featured two first-person human versus dinosaur shooters and a graphic adventure where you tried to make a teenage wizard fall in love with you, it took a special kind of game to top this category. McPixel is, to put it politely, that game. Although it's ostensibly a point-and-click adventure game, McPixel's appeal lies not in its gameplay, but instead in the unbelievably strange situations our main character is thrust into over and over and over. On one level, you might find yourself hammering a nuclear bomb inside of a snake to prevent it from exploding, while on the next, you'll kick a man in the nuts until he falls on a stick of dynamite, lodging it deep within his rectum and thus shielding you from its blast. It might not always or really ever make sense, but McPixel was a wacky breath of fresh air and proof of concept that Steam Greenlight can be a valuable asset for developers whose games might otherwise be too wacky to be discovered. For that and so many other reasons, McPixel is my pick for the weirdest game of 2012. The game I was most wrong about. They Bleed Pixels. Although a lot of viewers probably feel like I missed the mark when it comes to Super Monday Night Combat or Towns, my opinions on those games still remain unchanged. However, I am willing to admit that perhaps I was a little bit too hard on They Bleed Pixels, an HP Lovecraft-inspired action platformer that I probably expected a little too much from, given the constant comparisons I made between it and Super Meat Boy. So yes, although They Bleed Pixels might not be one of the best platformers of its generation, and although I still have some reservations about the way it controls, I'm willing to relent and agree that it's not nearly as bad as I seem to suggest that it was. That being said, if you're holding your breath waiting for me to sing the praises of the new Gianna Sisters game, you're gonna be waiting a long, long time. Thanks for joining me on the first day of Wendy's 2012, everyone. Be sure to check back tomorrow to find out my picks for the best PC and Xbox Live Arcade indie games of last year, as well as my pick for 2012's best multiplayer and a little bit more. Thank you guys for watching.